All right, so I've done the other side here. And let's look at my weld here. Um, I am very new at this, so I'm just, you guys already know that, new at the uh, TIG welding. And so you can see that it's about three quarters of an inch-ish. Some of the bigger ones may go up to an inch, but nah, probably three quarters of an inch in my heat zone. And so what I'm doing is, is I'm going about an inch and then letting it cool, stopping, letting it cool, and then going another inch, and that's why you get this pattern. I see some people who just do one long um, weld, and it does about, in what I'm looking at, it looks like about the same heat pattern. Um, I have a guy that does this for a living on, I follow on Instagram and I also am a Patreon person. So I actually sent him a picture of this and said, what could I do better? What am I doing wrong? He said, the heat zone is way too big, way too big. He said, so turn your, uh, turn your heat down and get your tungsten closer and be more precise. That's I think he, what he said. Um, and then I had another guy tell me that I need to speed up a little bit so I can do that. Now this is on pulse. I'm pulsing this. So I've got it going, you know, it'll go pulse, pulse, pulse. So it's only melting when it pulses and that's supposed to actually take some of the heat out of it. So maybe I need to turn my pulse up faster to where it's like pulse, 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 and I'm just kind of moving along at a faster rate. I'm not sure. I do, uh, it, it is pulled down just a little bit, and you're not gonna be able to see this from this angle. Uh, there's barely anything there, but as we come down here, it gets a little bit, it gets a little bit bigger. But I'm getting ready to planish. I haven't planished this yet, so I'm gonna grind the top of this off and planish it down. But I think, what what I'm asking is I don't see I see people doing this TIG welding and sheet metal but I don't see uh, how to say that really I, I can't find any good examples of like I'm a guy who I can watch something a couple of times and I can figure it out I'm like okay I, I see how this guy uh, is doing this and this is I'm going to work on it until I get it and I, that's what I do. So TIG welding, I'm, I'm going to work on it till I get it. And I may look back at this video eventually and go, wow, that is some sucky work. Um, but right now, I don't see any good examples of welding just a 18 gauge or probably 20 gauge sheet metal that looks much different than this with like no heat zone. Um, I know that these are probably a little bit taller than they should be um got good penetration so i know i'm, I'm not saying i just need to keep working on this until i until i figure out but i need to i need an example i guess is what i'm saying because and i've looked all over instagram i've googled sheet metal welding there's tons of videos on people doing stuff but their stuff doesn't look really any different than this other than they don't have these little arrow looking things and that's because they don't stop. They usually just do one solid pass. That may be better, I don't know. Um, people say that when you do this, you have more of a chance for it to warp unevenly because you're it's going to shrink or shrink unevenly. It's gonna shrink regardless because that's just what heat's gonna do to it. But if you do just one, then it heats and shrinks more uniformly so you can planish it back out more uniformly. I guess this is, maybe make it a little harder but it also is introducing i would think less heat into the panel because you're not on the panel for however long that you're running this all the way down through here i'm just going here letting it cool here letting it cool here letting, you know so that seems like a a pretty good way now there's another thing that people are saying well always butt your metal all the way up together and then weld it and then 
this other guy that I'm talking about that I, a Patreon guy that builds, man, he builds unbelievable cars. So I have no reason not to, to believe him. He leaves a gap. He says, because anytime you butt the metal up against each other like that and it shrinks, it's shrinking into itself and it's causing, it's basically binding the metal up. So you can't get it planished back out as good as if you leave a small gap. And we're talking about like, I don't know, 20 thousandths gap or something like that. It's really small, but um, that's what he does. Um, I didn't do that this time because I did the other one and it turned out what I think is pretty good. So I did it the exact same way because I just didn't want to like take a chance and start blowing holes all in this or whatever by having a gap. So I didn't put a gap in this one. But uh, yeah, I mean, if you guys are do this and you're 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 good at it, you happen to come across this video, man. If there's something that I'm doing that I can do better, or there's some kind of example, like some video, post a link, you know, in my in my video of somebody that really is really good at this, and so that I can actually watch and say, okay, that's what I'm shooting for. Cause that's what I need is where, where do I set the bar? You know, the, because at this point I, I'm sticking two pieces of metal together. I can planish it out flat and I guess that's good enough. But like I said, I really like to get good at this to where I'm not having to do a bunch of extra work, a bunch of extra grinding and all the stuff. So, um, and the bad thing is a lot of people who TIG weld, they don't TIG weld sheet metal. They TIG weld just regular steel or stainless steel and all kind of, you know, you can make it beautiful, uh, all kinds of stuff. But normally just carbon steel sheet metal is not something that's overly, you know, it's not beautiful. It's not, you know, it's just you're sticking a couple pieces of metal together. So I don't know. Um, let me know what you think, and uh, I'm sure this is going to work just fine. I'm getting ready to uh, grind some of this down and then uh, planish it out, see if I can't get it back up level, and I, and I will. It'll, if I, it'll be real close if not, and then I'll have to take some of this metal off here on this edge to actually get it to fit into the uh, drip rail. But, um, yeah, I just, I don't know. That guy saying that that heat zone is way too hot, I'm just like, man, how can you get it any less hot than that? Except like moving faster. But then there's a fine line where you got, you got penetration. You wanna get good penetration. So you gotta put some heat into it to get that. And it's just, a, I know it's a, good, it's a balancing act, but all right, enough talking. <laughs>
swage or whatever you call that. I don't want to be beating on it from the front, right? So, because I don't want to dent it all up or whatever. And as accurate as I'd like to be with a hammer, I'm not completely accurate. So, what I decided to do is come from the back side, go ahead and put my uh, die come down, and then try to. I've got just a little bit that needs to be either shrunk or brought up or whatever. So, I'm going to work this from back here. And I also bought one of these, which I'm going to use on this. However, not knowing this, this is not the right uh, speed. So I've got a buffer over there. Well, the buffer goes like 3, 000 to 3,000 RPMs. Well, that's too slow. You want one that's about 6,000 RPMs for this disc from what they say. Well, this one right here goes up to like 10,000 RPM. So I'm kind of having to work the trigger on and off, on and off to kind of do it. I worked with it a little bit yesterday on this panel here. Um, and it worked out pretty good. Uh, this thing's been welted, welted, welded multiple times, as you can see. And warped and brought back or whatever. So I worked on this. It's not like my, I haven't been kind of doing some test panels. That's why it's taking so long because I'm really trying not to screw those up. I mean, they're expensive. So uh, making sure I get all this planishing down right and all that is probably pretty important. So that's really nice flat. Like I said, I've welded this multiple times, beat on it, planished it. And uh, so it was a pretty good test piece for me. But anyway, I used, this on that yesterday too so but again i've got one of these on order which was expensive uh but it's a makita and it's a six six thousand rpm makita that so it'll be made more for this because yeah once you take off with this and this thing starts hitting higher rpms than six thousand man it starts wanting to and of course your hands close to it so you don't want to you know what i mean it's like oh this is dangerous so um you got to kind of really watch what you're doing and uh, not spin it too fast. So, all right, I'm going to uh, sand over this and see where my highs and lows are, and uh, start working on this. All right, this is what we got after sanding that. That's a flexible um, acrylic block. Try to kind of contour it to this shape that I want, so you can see my highs and you can see the lows. So, I'm going to focus on the highs mostly because the rest of this is fairly uh, looks like it's probably the same as the metal from here to you know what I mean it looks good so which means this is probably good too but I do have some highs here that need to, to uh, go back down and so I can use that or I think I'm going to take off and just tap on these a little bit with a hammer and dolly first and then get it a more refined and then go ahead and use that uh, to see what I can do with it so when I use that I'll bring you back and I'm not good with that either, but I'm learning. So I'll kind of give you an idea how that's supposed to work. All right, see ya. Let's get that hot enough to where it steams when you put that rag on it or when you spray it. I'm not spraying it because I don't want to just soak everything down. I'm just using a wet uh, damp rag, or it's wet actually. 
But uh, I feel like it's doing something. And I'm gonna keep working and then I'll put blue on it and then I'll, I'll do it again until I can hopefully get this thing as flat as possible within reason. So yeah, I'll just keep working these highs and keep heating this up and see see what it does. Anyway, that's kind of my, I, you're probably actually supposed to hold it more flat on the panel, but because I've got all this, I really can't do that. I'm gonna be running into stuff. So yeah, see I've got that that I'll run into. So that's why I'm tipping it. You're probably not supposed to do that, but uh, I don't really have a choice. Uh, on this and if I flipped it over again, I might run into my bead that I made and Get it all gouged up but, I mean, At the end of the day, it's gonna have some filler on the other side anyway And so filler can fix a lot of sins If you guys already know that All right, let's see what we got here If I didn't any good I did I did some good uh, high spots here high spot here but all, whatever's in there it was high is, is down so yeah a little bit in here and here and here I'll keep working that and see if I can't get it to go away I, I've figured out that I'm not getting this panel very hot uh, obviously I run it and then I'll kind of touch it it's getting it it's getting it warm Maybe hot, but not hot enough to steam. So I'm probably not using it just right, right yet, but I think I'm really worried about that thing running at such a high RPM. I don't want to let it go too, too far. So if I can get the one that actually stays right at what it's supposed to stay at, then I'll be a little more, uh, I'm just afraid that thing comes apart. If it comes apart, it's going to kill me. If it shoots into my stomach or, Man, that thing like cuts you in half. It's it's a pretty uh, pretty stout piece of metal, so I just don't want to spin it too fast and have something bad happen. So I'm kind of just trying to feather it, and it's just not getting it quite hot enough to really, I think, do what it was made to do. So let me throw that in there while I'm talking about that. I got that from Dagger Tools. If anybody's curious, it's a nine inch. Uh, it was fifty bucks for that and the backing plate, which if you go through other people. Um, they're super expensive, like, may, and maybe that's not, a, I don't know, so far it's, it's fine, but like, you're going to sp spend hundreds of dollars for the setup and everything else if you go through some other manufacturers of those, so I found that one, is like, man, that seems like a smoking deal, it's just a piece of stainless steel, um, and so, you see where I've got into my paint over here on the, on the deal, but... Um, that'll clean off, no big deal. But yeah, you're supposed to have a nut that actually recesses down in there, which I don't have. I'm gonna have to figure that out. Um, because yeah, you want to be able to just glide this thing across the panel, just touching the top, just touching these high spots. So when this is down, in theory, it should be only touching those high spots, which heats that up, and then you quench it and it brings it back down. So that's the the thought behind this. I I think I'm right. I don't know. Who knows? I'm sure somebody out there can tell me I'm wrong. All right, I'm gonna keep it up. All right, there's that one. Um, I gotta trim a little bit of this in here off. It's not seating all the way forward like it should. But you can see once this sits down in there, I've marked this little line with a uh, scribe. That's where it's gonna be cut, which works out good because I can cut it right to that little edge just run it right up in there and make that disappear and then that should pull down and fit right in there so yeah until i get better that's just the best it's gonna i'm gonna be able to get i've got a little bit of a low in there 
but it's like so tiny. Um, you know, um, I'm gonna have to put filler on it anyway, but uh, yeah, it's pretty small. But planishing this back up and all that, that took a long time. And I don't know, maybe not stopping and starting and stopping and starting would help with that. Maybe just one long bead would, would be what I need. I've got a little deal down here that I need to fill in. But uh, I'm going to probably just do that with a MIG real quick. Zap it a couple of times. Because filling that hole in with TIG is... It's tricky, so um, you get into blowing away, making a bigger hole if you're not careful. So, well, that's that. So, all right, guys, we'll see you.